Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousemoon.com and today I'm going to take you on a what we eat in a week video which is basically just where I share one meal every day for an entire week and take you along with me. Day one, I had to photograph beef carnitas for my blog and so I decided to film it as well to take you all along with that. So I started with a two to three pound chuck roast two tablespoons butter, a cup of, you can either use water, beef broth, chicken broth, two teaspoons chili powder, a teaspoon cumin, a teaspoon salt, half a teaspoon each of garlic and onion powder, and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. I also had a couple of bell peppers and an onion. Now, the first thing I did was sear the meat. So I just added a tablespoon of butter to the hot instant pot on the saute function and turned it over so that I got a little bit of browning on each side. Next, I mixed up the spices in a small bowl. I added the broth and the spices to the instant pot and cooked it at high pressure for an hour. Meanwhile, I added some peppers and onions to the rest of the butter in a cast iron skillet. I served it with guacamole, cilantro, lime, salsa, sour cream, jalapenos, all that good stuff. You can get this full recipe over on the blog. I also have instructions for if you wanna make it in a slow cooker or in the oven. It's a really good way to use a roast if you want a break from the usual potatoes, carrots type of roast. This is what a look at the baby photo shoot looks like. Day two, I somehow completely forgot that I was shooting a what we eat in a week, so I didn't actually film me making anything. I only have the after video. At this current time, I am getting through all of the cuts of meat in my freezer that I don't really like to cook. Now, it's not that ribs and wings aren't absolutely delicious. They're just hard to feed a family. It's much easier to use like a whole chicken or ground beef, especially when you have a bunch of little kids. For the chicken wings, I breaded them in egg, einkorn flour, and salt and fried them in coconut oil. I tossed them with a mixture of butter and hot sauce, kind of a hot wing thing. Put them in the oven so they could cook a little bit more. For the ribs, I just put all kinds of seasonings on it and added it to an instant pot with a little bit of water and cooked it for, I believe, about 25 minutes at high pressure. I then doused it with Date Lady barbecue sauce, which I absolutely love. It's naturally sweetened, super healthy. And then I took all of the meat off the bone and put it back in all the juices so that my kids could easily eat it. Luke and I and the older kids ate the hot wings and some of the ribs as well. The pork worked well for the younger kids. I just served it with chips, salsa, and guacamole. Kept it really easy. Today, I'm just gonna get a simple meatloaf going. I have two pounds of ground beef. I've been using these organic panko crumbs for the meatloaf. I used to always just use like einkorn flour or oatmeal. These are really good, considerably better, so I have to get some more of those. Also, just gonna add two eggs, some ketchup. I don't measure with this at all, I just start pouring it in. That's probably about a third of a cup. Some onion powder garlic powder, salt. Again, I don't know how much I add. A little pepper, a little herbs de Provence. And then I'm gonna throw in a diced onion and get this in a nine by 13 and then just bake it with some potatoes and oil and salt in my cast iron skillet. I often get asked what my kids do whenever I'm cooking. And so I thought I'd just give you a quick glance because it looks so clean and nice right here. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about what they do whenever I'm cooking. So first we have dough. I make the little kids dough to roll out. This I have to still clean up. I will just put this back in the fridge. I made it yesterday. So they play with it yesterday, today, and then probably tomorrow and at some point it'll go in the compost. So that's one game we play. They just were playing blocks and I told him, my four year old, before he went and played forts, he had to clean up the blocks. And this is what they are working on now. Fort making time, aren't we? And then the other kids are running around upstairs, so. They're busy, they're here, they're doing stuff while I'm cooking. I try to make them clean up one mess before the other. 
Are you gonna make a nice fort, Mikes? Hi, yes. Hi. Got a nice little crisp one. Now I'm just going to put them in the oven with the meatloaf to finish off. That way I can just forget about the full meal until lunchtime. Halfway through baking, I do like to do a little bit of ketchup on top, and this is not obviously super healthy, but it makes it so much better to add a little bit of this organic brown sugar. It just makes it kind of like caramelized on top. I don't know, just a couple tablespoons on the whole meat makes it really, really good. I'm gonna share something with you that some of you are not going to like. These are chicken feet. So whenever the local farm that I purchase from butchers chickens, obviously they are left with chicken feet and you can buy them really cheap. And so last time I ordered, I ordered a big old bag. It was more than double this size of chicken feet. And I made, there's only a little bit left now, some of the most gelatinous broth ever. And I'd heard that this was the case. And so I now purchase chicken feet to make bone broth with. I also purchase chicken shells. Whenever they cut off the breasts and the legs and the thighs and all that kind of stuff, they're left with kind of like a middle part. And this is also really good for broth making. And so you can usually get those cuts really cheap. Now you might be worried about the taste, but it tastes exactly like normal broth. So I'm gonna get one of the chicken shells and then the rest of these feet going in some water in my Instant Pot. I just do the soup function on low pressure for 240 minutes and then I usually repeat it again. And then if it's bedtime and I don't feel like dealing with the broth, I'll just set it to the warm function for 10 hours, then strain it off the next day. That's probably what will happen today. I might get it strained before the end of this day. I don't know, but I have no problem just leaving it in there on warm for a little while. That's how you get this really gelled up broth, which is what you want. And then I'll have more broth to make soups later in the week. If you don't want to see chicken feet in my pot, look away now. I do find it fascinating though that we are fine eating certain things because we're used to eating them. So my sisters and I like to joke around about like pork butt. That's delicious. You see it on a, res a restaurant menu. But since we don't eat chicken feet, it's just gross. I get it. I'm the same way with some things. I think, okay, I'm not used to that, so it's gross. Same with venison. I know a lot of people who will not eat deer meat. It's gross to them. Just so funny because we eat cows and I'm, I'm all about it. I like eating cows too, but why not this nice lean animal that runs wild and free? That's gross, but a cow, it's just funny. So anyways, if you can get past this, it really does make some of the best broth. Plus it really helps with waste because if people aren't buying chicken feet, I don't know, maybe there's other uses I'm not aware of. They're just going to get thrown away. And so save them, use them, they're great.
today I'm gonna use some of the bread that I made yesterday to bake a strata. Now we already did use one of these um, loaves of bread just for breakfast and things like that. But I'm gonna use the other one in this dish. So I'm gonna whip up 12 eggs, three cups of milk, a cup of cream, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, some pepper, and I'm gonna throw that with several handfuls of kale, one and a half cups of diced bacon and onion, and then I'm gonna toss in the bread cut in one inch cubes, and one and a half cups of shredded cheese, and then I'm gonna bake it for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees. This meal is great for breakfast, but it does also work for a lunch or a dinner. I wanna take a quick break to tell you about today's sponsor, Thrive Market. Thrive Market is an online grocery store where you can get natural, organic food delivered directly to your door. I've been a happy Thrive Market customer for many years now. I love getting things like nutritional yeast for popcorn, all-purpose einkorn flour. I get my einkorn pasta on there. I get seasonings like taco seasoning. So many great things on there that sometimes I cannot find locally. I love it that Thrive Market allows you to search by what is your dietary preference. So if you're gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan, you can go and browse by those categories. Also, if you're a regular Thrive Market customer, you will be suggested things that you purchase regularly. So a lot of times I'll be forgetting that I need something, but then when I log in and I see my past orders and they suggest certain things to me, I'm able to get everything that I need that I usually get from Thrive Market. Thrive Market offers two membership options. You can pay month to month for $9.95 a month, or you can do the yearly membership at $59.95, which allows you to save a little bit month to month, which is the option that I typically do. They offer free shipping on orders over $49, so you don't have to worry about that. Usually I have no trouble getting to that mark for my family of nine now. Thrive Market is offering a new offer, 40% off your first order, which is great, plus a free gift by using my link, thrivemarket.com forward slash farmhouse on Boone. It'll also be linked in the description box below. Tonight I'm going to make a whole bunch of chicken pot pies. We had some tornadoes come through our area. I'm sure you heard about them. Some of them were just 20-ish miles from here where it actually touched down and took out leveled buildings. So we have people in town that are staying at our church who are disaster relief and our church is feeding them. And so my night is tonight. And so I'm gonna make chicken pot pies. I'm going to do three that I'm just gonna bring up to church and leave in the fridge for somebody to bake about an hour before they're ready to eat tonight. And then I'm going to make us one in this for our dinner as well. So I'm gonna start by cutting up a whole bunch of veggies, potatoes, onions, carrots. I'm gonna make a couple pie crusts and um, make the sauce and just get this going. If you're curious about my chicken pot pie recipe, I do have one on the blog that has all the measurements for what I do. I'm not gonna use any measurements now. I know roughly that once I saute up the veggies, I add in a bunch of chicken and cream and broth and salt and garlic powder, fresh garlic, and it ends up tasting really good. My chicken is still frozen, so I'm just going to cook it here in my Instant Pot so it's fast.
Day six, I did a Zuppa Toscana soup. I just love a creamy soup like this in the winter. You can make a big pot and just eat off of it all day long. I start by dicing up bacon and cooking it, and then I add to the grease that cooks off of that. Diced onion, minced garlic, some potatoes, saute that for a little bit. I also brown some sausage and use some of my homemade bone broth, which any time I can get more bone broth into my family that's been homemade, I love it. I also add in some kale, so some fresh veggies in the middle of winter, salt and pepper to taste, and then I top it off with cream. The full recipe is over on the blog permasamboon.com, so I will leave that link in the description box below as well as obviously all the rest of these recipes. Now the reason that I did most of this soup in a cast iron skillet and not in the Dutch oven is because I bought a Dutch oven just for blog photography that I didn't actually want to use for my cooking so that it would stay nice for photos. And so I'm actually gonna transfer this over and cook it in the broth in it, but not cook the other components of the recipe in it. So that way I can keep it nice a little bit longer for photos. letting some sourdough flatbreads rise and ferment by the wood stove all day. So I'm gonna roll this out, grill them on the cast iron skillet and make some sourdough flatbread pizzas. do a few for the kids that just have the usual red sauce, mozzarella, and then I got some of these uncured salami. And then I'm gonna do one, a couple probably, for Luke and I that has jalapenos and date sauce, date chili sauce that I love, I've showed you guys that before. Maybe some bacon and arugula, goat cheese, we're gonna make it good, onions. bit of olive oil over the onions and then I'm probably gonna put the arugula on till right before it's finished baking so it doesn't get too wilted. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this What We Eat in a Week video. Let me know in the comments below what's your favorite things to be cooking right now in the winter time. What cozy dishes do you like to make? As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.